Well, hello and welcome to the Photography Podcast. Now, before we start this week, we've got some really sad news. Um, unfortunately, um, Alan Wallace uh, is, has passed away. Um, if you don't know who he was, then let me just say he was a fantastic photographer, probably one of the best astrophotographers out there, if not the best. Uh, and I'm sure many of you will will know of his work, and I'm sure many of you will feel as upset as we do. So I know you guys might want to say a few words about him um, before we carry on. Yeah, I mean, I was, when it, it, it was kind of put in the group chat, I think you put it in the group chat, Gal, I was, well, Helen was actually talking to me and, and, and I just couldn't believe it. I said, what? And I just looked at my phone and she was saying, oh, like, what, what's wrong? And I was I was trying to focus on what you said and I was trying to <clears throat> reply to you. <clears throat> and it was just such a shock because he was such a young guy and I've followed Alan for, for, for a good few years. And um, like, not only was his photography like incredible and his knowledge of the the night sky at you know ditto but the passion that he had for his craft just made him so engaging and I did actually reach out to him a, a few years ago I think it was now and asked him to come on to the podcast um, which he said I would love to do but he said he was living out of boxes because he was just about to move to to Turkey to you know, pursue his career even further. But like Gary said, if you guys have never seen Alan Wallace, he kind of travels all over the world and the planning that goes into his shots, there's, there's months of kind of planning and how to get the solar eclipse to line up or a moonrise over a, a castle or something. And then his videos of him battling that the, 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 perhaps a cloud will start to roll in and you feel that adrenaline that 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 uh, anxiety from him that oh he might get the shot he might not get the shot um for me yeah he's going to be a, a huge miss and I, and I do uh send my condolences to his friends and family yeah i uh I met Alan, Alan um, a couple of years ago and he came to Antarctica with us uh it was quite funny because he had come over um, because at that time Antarctica was in the summer, so uh, there wasn't actually any astro <laughs> whatsoever. So that was the big joke because Alan was there <laughs> to photograph astro where there wasn't any. And uh, him and I got along really well. And he was supposed to come on this last trip, um, but uh, right at the end there, he had a he had a hernia operation and he had some complications, and um, he couldn't make it. So, uh, but yeah, it was a, a huge shock because, um, like you said, he was he was a pretty young guy, and uh, he was just so passionate about the night sky, probably more than the photography. The photography was kind of an excuse; it was more to do with the, the night sky, you know. But yeah, he'll be really missed. Uh, I was I was just shocked when I heard that this morning. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Um... Does anyone else want to say anything or are you guys all okay? Yeah. I think it puts into perspective some of the things that we sometimes have to say on this show where we perhaps bitch and moan a little bit and perhaps we should just say, look, you know, let's be thankful that we can go out with our cameras and make the most of the time we have. Yeah, yeah totally agree. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, totally agree. Um and what we're going to do is just play a little bit. Daz has selected a little bit uh, from one of uh, Alan's videos um, that we just want to, you know, play as a little bit of a tribute to him. So um, condolences to, you know, to his family and, um, and you know, rest in peace. We've been uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. 50 years ago, the first man set foot on the moon. It was an extraordinary moment that made us think differently every time we look up at the night sky. That's one small step for man. Now one man is on a mission. He wants to turn our eyes back to the night sky. 
Jane Wallace, one of the world's leading night sky photographers, is determined to capture the perfect shot of the moon in Wales. I really, 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 really want to get that shot and commemorate the moon landings. Alan wants to wake us all to the unique Welsh dark sky reserves, one of the country's greatest natural wonders. And we'll stop at nothing to achieve his goal. There's a fine line between dedication and madness. <laughs> I'm not sure which side of that line I'm on. But will a mix of moon, mountains, and Welsh weather prove an impossible combination? Oh, no! No! In his quest for the perfect moonshot. Never lose hope. It's always hope. So, this is the uh, 16th episode of season four of the Photography Podcast. And as you can see, there's there's uh, all seven of us here. Um, and actually, it's quite useful that there, there are all seven of us here because this is the, the last one uh, for this season. Um, we will be doing some ad hoc ones throughout the summer, but um, yeah, you get to about 16. And to be honest with you, I can't be bothered doing the editing anymore. It's just... Oh. <laughs> Honestly, it's just too much. Um, but we will be doing some over the summer, uh, and we'll be doing some as a build-up to our charity walk, which we sort of mentioned last week. And we kind of put the meat on the bones of that a little bit, haven't we? So I know, Jamie, you set up a, a Just Giving page. So if you want to go through the details of that and where people can go. and Yeah, yeah, we'll put a link into this this video, and I'll share it on the Instagram account and on our Facebook page as well. But yeah, we've eventually set up the Just Giving account. Um, as we've said, there's going to be three charities, um, Dementia UK, uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society and the Disabled Photographer Society. Um, on the Just Giving page, I've had to link three separate fundraising pages to one so you can choose which one you want to donate to or you can donate to all three, of course, entirely up to you. Um, and obviously during the hike and maybe on the lead up to the hike, we'll be filming some um, some bits and pieces that will go out. And obviously during the hike, I'm sure there'll be plenty of interesting stuff to film and uh, falls along the way so yeah we'll be <laughs> publicizing it but yeah it's it would be great if you guys could contribute and give us give us some donations to give us that push along the way that'd be great and of course you'll be able to look forward to gary's series everyday trading <laughs> everyday falling over um I, I, do you know i am i am actually thinking about doing a little a warm-up um little warm up video for it you know i've got some i've got some little walks planned that i'm going to you know try I thought and throw you were in. saving all no, of your energy no, for the day change me mind mate i thought you was resting no, between now and july I, I don't think i can i don't think i can so, you have to do a rocky yeah. montage at some stage <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah with really tight lycra <laughs> Adam, I'm trying to get people to the channel, not scare them off the channel, mate. That wouldn't work. Well, you um, know, some people might be into that, you know, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> no. It takes um, all sorts. Yeah. You could combine a bit of street work with running up the steps of the Albert Hall or something at the end. In Lycra. Yeah, yeah that would work. Yeah. Find a McDonald's um, or steps up. I mean, that, now that I've now that I've met you, Gary, you know, you're a very handsome man and you know, <laughs> why thank you <laughs> oh should have done that <laughs> should have done that oh dear um but i know i'm 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 better looking in real life apparently honestly um definitely <laughs> yeah um <laughs> shall we leave you two to it <laughs> yeah. we could just yeah no what what you guys don't know is i've part two of this is i've said that it's the end of the podcast but me and adam are doing our own little um Little private. Oh, are, no yeah. one's going to get to see it. It's just for us, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, really? Sure. Yeah. Oh, Adam doesn't know that yet either. But it'll be, be fine. News to me. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Is that, is if that it gets me views, I'm up for it. Is that the f four and a half inches? <laughs> Good one. Uh, uh, this is why we keep you in the bod. 
yeah. this is why we keep you in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but with with regards to just giving page, I was just going to add on to what Jamie said. You can choose which one that you want to put in, but we, as a collective, we'd really like it if you could, if we could get it as even as we could. So, so we want to give really, ideally, a third to each charity, not have one that gets a load more than the other. So, if you if you are looking to put some in and you can sort of see one of them lagging behind, it'd be great if you could just, you know, put a little bit their way. Uh, otherwise, Dave's got to make up the difference. So, um, <coughs> yeah. So, yeah. so uh, how are we all? How are we all? What have we been up to this week? Anything exciting? Uh, I've been out with a client up in the hills. That was a really good couple of days out. Ah, okay. Where did you go? Really nice guy. Was it Wales? Uh, we went into the hills on the first day and then the second day we were on the coast but he'd never done a long exposure before oh. and the look of delight on his face when we ran a 10 second exposure on the church in the sea he was so chuffed with what was on the camera just totally makes doing those sort of things worth it really does absolutely absolutely he must have been using case filters i would imagine he was because he didn't have any, so he used mine. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in. Yeah, well dropped in there, Adam. I don't nice. think anyone yeah. noticed a little plug. No. <laughs> I think you're fine. Affiliate link down below. Yeah. <laughs> Fight Stuart uh, for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyone else do anything exciting over the, the past week? Well, I think Adam can go, can't he? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah he hasn't well, been anywhere, has he? Yeah, he's been Spent away. 10 hours on a plane. <laughs> uh, nice. No, I was in, uh, after the Birmingham show, uh, I went up to Scotland for a few days, and um, <clears throat> we weren't there very long, but uh, it was good. Met up with um, Henry Turner and Ian Worth, and uh, we stayed in there. They had rented a house, so that was a good, uh, good chance to meet up with them just so we could hog some of their rooms. Because it was free, so why not? Why not? <laughs> no other reason. Uh, no, it's good. Um, but I'm, I am, I'm really happy to be home. It's been a lot of traveling lately, and you know, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I love going to these places, but the traveling part, not so much. Gets to after a while. Yeah, I saw a great shot from you on Instagram. Um, can't remember where it was. It was definitely in Scotland. It was the the, the silhouetted trees. You know that that one with the silhouette. All oh, right, trees? that was just uh, up from Torridon, up yeah. the hill there. I thought that was a great shot. Really like that. Oh, thanks. I realized, I realized it, I have, wasn't actually following you on Instagram. It's only when we sort set up the photography po- uh, podcast page that I realized that um, I'm not. Why well, I'm not following Adam? Crazy. So yeah. So. You weren't. You weren't following me until recently, over again. Yeah, but Adam though. Well, that's yeah. Okay, <laughs> you won't. We won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> Was I not following you either, Sam? Well, you followed me recently, <clears throat> as in last week. I think I got to follow, unless you. Oh yeah, so it would have been the same. Yeah, yeah. It, no, it would yeah. have been around the same time. It's all right. Yeah. It's all What's right. your handle, Sam? I might not be following you either. Let's I see. wouldn't bother Adam. Oh, it's um, it's <laughs> <laughs> Sam Sam J Bose. I got into trouble trouble with Alistair Ben at the show as well because he was he he was like, oh, I'll follow you on Instagram, and he, he was like, you're not following me, and I he was like. Oh. Oops. Oh look! It says follow That's back. Yeah, okay. oh. there you go. Sorry about that. That's Anybody good. else? That's, right. <laughs> that's my my followers are up to four now, so that's that's really good. <laughs> no, no, you got uh, eighteen hundred. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's very oh, good. Oh, Dave, I'm not following you either. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dave. <laughs> Sorry. Unfortunately, I can't run to four and a half inches, though. So, <laughs> well, you've only just opened up your Instagram account again, haven't you, Dave? I have. Yes. Yeah. What? What? What had happened to that? Uh, I got hacked, and some bozo was trying to flog crypto, and oh. I there was no one to contact about it, so I just walked away from it, and I was able to, I completely. It, it, I was on my Facebook control page and I clicked a link that took me to Instagram accidentally. And it said, oh, you've got the wrong password. Do you want to change it? Oh, and I no. said, yes, please. But I didn't yeah. have to put in the dodgy password that the other person had used. So I was able to get oh. it back. 
Um, that was... And what was the password that you put in? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> and a gate of seven. Because my crypto sales have gone like they've gone through the floor. <laughs> it's not good. See, I've requested to follow uh, Adam, but he hasn't let me in, says he. Really? Same with Jamie, same with well, I just followed Sam, you. Stuart, or the whole lot of you. Oh, and Gary. I, I, really? Sorry, Gary. I, I let you in. <clears throat> I thought I was following you. Oh, it was probably, yeah. because, it was probably because I blocked you, Dave, when you first said block my account. Cause yeah, it's that's pro- probably what it is. It doesn't Uh-oh. matter. I don't care. <laughs> You're all rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Stu? What have you been up to? Now, actually, we can tie this in with, with something we were going to talk about. Have you got any news for us, Stu? Any news on, on premises or anything interesting you want to talk about? Like premises uh, or anything? <laughs> <laughs> galleries. Premises. Yeah. <laughs> premises, galleries. Uh, yeah, moving. Moving gallery. Um as of start of May. So, uh, yeah, a lot going on at the minute. Uh, absolutely just up to my neck in planning, organising, costing, you name it, basically. Um, so, yeah, exciting, uh, exciting times. Uh, it's a it's a risk, I'll be honest. It's a pretty it's a pretty big risk. Um, but, you know, I took a I took a risk doing this six years ago when I set it up and uh, I've I've just got to a point with the, the place that I'm in now that like I've kind of outgrown it a bit and I'm at the limit of what I can do with it in terms of um, revenue. There's only so much you can put on a, on a, on the walls in a small gallery and uh, whatever I do, whatever work I, I choose to put up there, it's always going to be kind of capped a little bit so uh, the place i'm moving into is is significantly bigger it's probably i'd say it's at least four times the size of it so um so yeah looking forward to it uh, so there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of changes a lot of changes with with my business in general um so uh yeah very busy at the minute so probably not much time to actually take any pictures but uh not that I'm missing much because the weather's dreadful at the minute anyway. So yeah. so you'll be able to have a special department just selling frames now then? Yeah, yeah. For those people that uh, have absolutely zero interest in my just photography, I'll have a little section just for that woman when she comes back uh, so she can buy the frames on her, Stu, on her own. Yeah. Um, have you ever um, considered representing other artists other than just yourself? And I don't mean other photographers, I mean just other artists in the area. Uh, I have, I did in the early days, I did have other photographers in the gallery. Um, it's, I mean, the size of that gallery, I mean, you've, you've been past it and you guys have been in it as well. It's, it's, it's too small at the, I mean, the new place, potentially there's, there's, there's a lot of scope to do sort of exhibitions with other photographers and stuff like that. But the, the one I'm in at the minute, it's just the yeah, minute yeah, I no, start I putting it's profit walking out the door basically. Sure. Um, and that's, that's always the case, whatever you do with other photographers. So, uh, but the new place is big enough where potentially I can have a, a sort of section of the gallery, just purely running, you know, ex- exhibiting other photographers and stuff. So th- there's a lot of possibilities with other stuff. So, uh, yeah. Cause isn't that what uh, Joe Cornish did? He had other artists and yeah, well, he's he's got his gallery is a bit different in that like it's over, it's over like two floors and multiple rooms. So that you know oh, okay. he's got a lot, he had a lot of scope to just to do that kind of thing. But I, I think in in his gallery as well, they, they serve like coffees and stuff like that. It was more yeah. of a, a a center rather than a just a gallery on its own. Whereas obviously mine's more just purely a gallery. Um, but what I what I would like to do certainly with the new spot is look at having other photographers in um, more as just a kind of a to make it a sort of destination for landscape photography in the area because there's so few landscape photography galleries now um, mm. that if it's done right I think um, it can attract a lot of interest just from photographers in general not just yeah. tourists because obviously yeah. where I'm based it's yeah. it's tourists mainly but uh but yeah no lots lots to lots would you to have a, enough room for like little presentations and stuff uh 
in the new gallery? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's on, it's on. I mean, I'll, what I'll do, Gary, I'll send you some pictures so you can overlay this. Um, but uh, it's yeah. it's over two floors. The upstairs is as big as the downstairs, but it's it's currently marked as um, like a storage room. So it's there's issues potentially with it. Um, being classed as rateable for business rates, basically. So if the upstairs can be used commercially, then I've got loads of scope to, to run sort of classes and yeah, all sorts of stuff awesome. like that out of there as well. So, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of potential. But, you know, I'll be honest, it's a, it's a pretty big risk. So, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And when's the grand opening plan for you? I'm planning for 1st of May. Um, so okay. this this month will be my last month in the in the old spot, and then I'm going to spend the, the next sort of sort of two three weeks uh, doing mm-hmm. it up. For, fortunately, um, it's pretty much ready to move in now. It's it doesn't really need an awful lot. It, the only the main things I need to do is put some lighting in and uh, some hanging systems for the for the frames. But as an actual space in terms of like it being freshly painted and the flooring and everything, it's it's actually doesn't need much work. I mean, that was part of the attraction with it, is that it's pretty much ready to go now. So, yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I, d- I just want to say before we go, I had two brilliant jokes lined up there, but the time's gone past, so, I, you know. Um, oh, yeah. go on, I want to hear them. Well, they weren't really brilliant, but one of them was relating to Joe, <laughs> Joe Cornish, and, and when you said that he does everything, I was like, does he do food? Um because you know he could do his own pasties and you know so he can plan words. So. You see, and then the other one that then popped into my head is I wonder if I wonder if Charlie does weight training. Oh God! Yeah. So, well, um, I had a joke lined up earlier when you were talking about Rocky. Yeah. And I thought, are oh, you Chubba Lang? But I thought that might be a bit rude. That's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Lang. Thanks, Dad. Thanks. thanks. I, don't know. I probably deserve that for my really terrible jokes. So, um, uh, you, Daz, what have you been up to? Because I got something on on the uh, mm. on the chat that said um, Helen's gardening woes or something. Oh, crikey! This week, so Helen's been off work this week. And uh, she's been really kind of getting stuck into the garden. And then she said, oh, I had a bit of a mishap today with some uh, with some electrical hedge trimmers and then showed me her thigh and literally kind of like she's got these huge gashes on her on her leg where oh, she God. kind of dropped the hedge trimmer down. So she's covered in bruises and cuts on her on her leg. And then today I was out there kind of helping her and I got up the step ladder and cutting all the apple tree down and then I dropped a branch on her head. Um, but I didn't realise I did it until I got down and she was literally crying and holding her head. And I said, what's, what's wrong? You know, it's only an apple tree. And then, yeah, this kind of lump started to appear on her head. So, yeah, bless her. So she's really been in the wars this week. Oh, you had a great week out in the garden then. Yeah. Oh, I would have thought you got your gardeners and your manservants to have done all of that. They're for on you. holiday. They're oh, on holiday. Right. I've oh. given them. I've given them yeah, a weekend off. Oh. Uh, Easter weekend off. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That West Wing's going to feel empty without them. Isn't it? I know it's, it's shocking at the moment. Oh, can I just before just while I think because it's Helen's birthday tomorrow, um, and it's also our son's birthday tomorrow. But he's in Australia and he's currently hiking, I think it's the Blue Mountain Trail just outside Sydney. And he FaceTimed us earlier today. I think it was about nine o'clock this morning, which I think was something like seven o'clock his time. And uh, he's got his hammock set up in the trees, right up on the on, on the on the on, on the ridge, not the quite the ridge line, but up on the ridge. And he's looking one direction. He when he goes on the sorry behind him was west, and he took us over there to see this beautiful sunset. But hopefully, he's saying when he wakes up tomorrow on his thirtieth birthday, he'll wake up to this incredible sunrise. And I thought, oh, 
what a way to spend your 30th birthday sleeping, waking up in a hammock in Australia, up in the mountains. There's my boy. Yeah. My boy. On the negative side, though, he looks a bit like you, doesn't he? I did notice that. I saw the picture. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Leslie said well, that as well. Oh, oh poor lad. Sam's, <laughs> Sam's 30, right, and he's had a beard for the last five years, and he can grow a beard so much better than me. He gets, I've got it all patchy around here, and he's just got this full beard. Yeah. But that beard that you saw on that picture, that's nothing like the beard he's got now. I mean, he's really embraced the uh, the kind of Aussie outback kind of beard. It's it's very David Bellamy. Oh, okay. He does look like you then, mate. I've got to say. He does, he look, does look like, like you. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Jamie? You've been up to anything exciting? No, no, not, not really. No, I did... Uh... I did do a little local walk, as you saw, Gary, and um, <laughs> may have may have sort of used some terminology similar to somebody else's videos, perhaps. Oh, do do okay. you know what, Jamie? Do you know what? I watched that and I thought, what a really nice little ramble and chat that was. Seriously, right. I did. I really okay. enjoyed it. And it, 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 if people haven't watched it, you should go and watch it. it was, I thought it was really good. No, it's rubbish. No, no, mate, it's good. You're gonna do. You're gonna do more, right? Only because it's it's good fun. I did really enjoy getting out and going for a walk. It was like just under four miles. Um, and as I say, the, the filming of the of of the walk around was actually really good fun because I could just chat away to myself, effectively. But I'm talking it in the camera, and it's I don't know. It was just a really nice thing to do. You know, there was not much to photograph, and there isn't much to photograph around my place. But it was just good fun to get out, walk around, and get in some practice. Obviously for our a bigger version in in July, but yeah, I might do a bit more of it. You know, it does show off the local area, and you know, yeah, well, I'm not we're not blessed with a lot of the scenery such as some of our colleagues on this uh, on this call. But you know, it's it is what it is, and you know, it's getting out and exploring it and finding little places that you didn't know exist. And yeah, good, it's good fun. I did enjoy it. And and how did you get out of what you were supposed to be doing tonight? Because there was a message at one point saying you couldn't make tonight, and now suddenly you're here. What did you do? Fake an illness well, or? No, 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 say, no. I went this can... I went this afternoon to uh, to see is my nephew's birthday, so I was told that I'd, well, not told. I was I was reminded that I had to go to a birthday party tonight, told. but I uh, I went oh. this afternoon to yeah. to give him an egg and uh, wish him happy Easter and wish him happy birthday at the same time. That's not much of a birthday that. present, is it? A bloody egg. Mm. Oh, it was a nice one, though. Was do you not like him? One. <laughs> yeah, he's always been nephew. Of course I do. How old is he? 17. Oh, he's old enough to have an egg. put up with an egg. <laughs> yeah, have an egg, yeah. Well, there was another present as well, but Leslie gave him a present. I just gave him an egg. I was just the, the Easter egg deliverer. Leslie will give him the proper presents later. But do you remember years ago, Easter eggs used to be really expensive. Does anyone else remember that? I mean, yeah. you could spend a lot of money on it. There was none of these pound Easter eggs, like back in the, not that I can remember back in the day. They was all kind of really expensive. Well, you obviously don't have a wife like mine. I had to get yeah. a hotel chocolate one, and it was called yeah. it's called Ooh. Elizabeth, right? And okay, it's I'm not joking. It's about this big, right? About that big, with a little tiny cup underneath. Nope. It's eight quid. Ooh, Eight what? quid. Jeez. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But I was told Should I had just to get got it. her a Cadbury's cream egg and no. stuck it in one of your own egg cups. Yeah, no, I was told I had to get it, so I did my I did my due gil- due diligence and, and went and got it. So uh yeah. Uh, we we don't have eggs at all. I, I can't remember the last time I had an Easter egg and I never buy them for Jan. She she doesn't like them. Yeah. <coughs> hmm? Yeah. Now we always have mind you, hot cross buns toasted. That's a different matter. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Do you know what I had today? I bought I bought a pack of Welsh cakes today from Marks and Spencers, thinking they would be like, you know, if, if you're going to get some Welsh cakes, then get them from Marks and Spencers. They're bloody horrible. Yeah, <laughs> not as nice as the ones in Wales. Put it that way. I'll tell you what I had last weekend. I've never. Well, me and Helen went out for breakfast. We was up in Norfolk, and Helen got. Waffles or a a waffle, maple syrup and bacon. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's a Canadian mate, yeah. what a combination! I've never had that before. I would have oh, yeah. never really? have ordered that. Yeah. It's Honestly, a standard yeah, combination. Never. Well, that's pretty pretty standard. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. 
no, I thought, oh, bacon and, and syrup. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah incredible. So, yeah, obviously I'm well behind the, you know, the times here. You are, right? You're yeah. behind the curve, mate, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last time I had that, I, I had that breakfast was at um, IHOP at Niagara Falls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a big stack of, of waffles with bacon and maple syrup, top drawer. Last time I had it was in the diner at Butlins. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the same. Not quite class. the same. Oh, class that's me. Buttons. I've got class written all over me. Yep. <laughs> Cut me in two and you'll just see class written down the middle. Well, if you can move all the fat out of the way. Uh, Sam. What about you? Because I think you're the last one uh, for your week. Am, How's your week been? I am the last one. Yeah, it's, well, it's been a st- standard, standard week. But um, today was good, actually. Hannah and I went out. We actually shot a video, which was good. It was we, we went. Funnily enough, we went on a local walk and we filmed it because um, that's not been done before. <laughs> mm, there's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you're copying Jamie then. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Jamie's obviously I, a I'm off to do here, the same right? thing tomorrow yeah. as it happens. I'm, I'm out for a local yeah. walk tomorrow. I'm going to film it. Yeah. And me. Yeah. It's a great idea. I don't know why we didn't think of doing it before, to be honest. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, to do it every fun. day, shouldn't we? Yeah. Should yeah. go in the landscape every day. That's yeah. a really good idea, Jamie. <laughs> to, be fair, though, I, to, be, to be fair, I can't really moan because I, I nicked the idea from Dave, really. <laughs> so, you know, it's Dave who should be outraged, really, if anyone. So, um, I, you know, but I'll be outraged on your behalf, Dave. You bastards. <laughs> How dare you? Oh uh, dear. Okay, so you, you you've been out for a nice walk and you filmed it, yeah? Been out for a nice yeah. walk, filmed it, took a couple of handheld daytime recce shots, but um I don't know whether it will see the light of day, it might do. It's not great yeah. photography. But it's just nice going out with Hannah actually and, and it's been So you so are copying since. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and me. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. It's, it's the first time in a long time I've actually had a had a chance to get Hannah into a video. So, um, yeah, that was good. Uh, okay. Well, I seem to have had um, a week of people emailing me going, when are you going to review our product? <laughs> and me going, oh, oh, yes, I seem to have forgotten about that. Uh, yes, I'll get onto it now. So I've had three emails this week from three different companies going, uh, you do know you've still got a product of ours that you need to do something with. So so yeah, so I've got the I've got the trail cam here. Look, here's the trail cam, which is going to get an outing mm-hmm. in a bit. And Ooh. I've got the uh, got the Ohem gimbal here that's going to get an outing in a bit. And I've also got the Yulanzi thing, the Jigami here that's going to get an outing in a bit. Get off my case. Yeah, filters. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Doesn't no. That no. Satisfy them. You've just you've just shared the product. Yeah, yeah. precisely. Yeah, that'll do on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they should. They should be. They should be happy with that. any longer, and you should be charging them. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, this one was on charge a minute ago. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm asking for money. I know. I just <laughs> forget it. This rubbish joke central. Um. So Bad jokes. Yeah. I was going you to can do... tell it's the last one of the season, can't you? It's like the last day of school. I'm demob we, we, We'll be playing games in the second half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, did you, did you ever have the one teacher? I, I, I'm, I'm sure most schools have them. Every other teacher was like, bring a board game in or, you know, like bring your Simon in or your whatever it is you're going to play with, Kapunk or whatever. You always had one teacher who used to do, right, today we're going to do, we're going to have loads of fun. We're going to do maths games. We had to like draw stuff on a grid and map out all the coordinates, and it made like a mouse or something. Do you, do you ever teach like that? No, I'm just me. No, no, no just okay. you. All right, okay. Well, Mister Reed, you got a lot to answer for. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I was going to move on to comments, but yeah. Actually, what? this week, weirdly, Did... last week we asked for questions in the comments, didn't we? And we got so many questions, I don't know what to do with them. And it's also the last episode of the season. I did see so, that somebody had um, responded about your selfie, though. Did you get it? I did. Copy that selfie. I did. Yeah. I did. I'll, I'll, I'll post it up. I'll post it up here, so so you can see it. Yeah, I was. You can see how happy I am in it. I'm like literally beaming. Let me try and find it on here. Uh, yeah. Um, where are we? 
the Don't best one the out. best one that I heard was uh, so my friend Paul most of you probably know you met Paul Paul Thompson yeah some guy ran up to him and he was Paul was standing there with Nick and uh, he handed Nick his camera he says oh can you take a picture of me and Paul so Nick took a picture and then the guy just <coughs> so Paul was quite happy about that because I bet he was yeah <laughs> <laughs> Blimey. I, I didn't get, I, we've already gone through some last episode. I didn't get a chance to talk to Nick. I was really disappointed. I was like, oh, yeah. But um, next time, Nick. Next time. How long was you at the show for, Adam, anyway? I didn't ask uh, you. The whole time. Um, but How I, was you? Yeah. I Sorry I didn't get to talk to you a bit more. Um, just, there was just so many people I wanted to talk to. So mm. ended up going to have coffee. Well, Dave, Dave came out for a coffee with us one day. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to have a chat with everyone, but just not enough time. No. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Mm. Yeah. Not not um not resentful. Oh, and anything. Sam. Sam came out with a cough for a coffee with us, didn't you, Sam? I came out for dinner. So Oh, that's right, you did. Sorry. It's been what, so it was so long ago. What about you, Stu? <laughs> what was you there just for the night? <laughs> you what you what, sorry? What was you there just for the night, Stu? Yeah, I, I could have gone there for the four days, but I, I just, like Adam was saying about travelling, I've been kind of the same thing with travelling the last month and the show was right at the end of loads of travelling and I just, I, I think the missus would have thought I'd disowned her basically. So I said I'd do the day, but I, I wasn't going to do the four days because it just, you know, I was at my wit's end by the time I got down to that show, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was why I only did the one day. But yeah, oh, yeah. mm. um, hopefully I'll go next year. Um, I, I I really enjoyed it. Oh, next year! By the way, I don't know if I told you guys this. I was I went out to Canic Chase with a few guys from the F seven point one, and they were saying that next year it's moving to the Excel Centre for a year in London. Yeah, that yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Where oh, is the Excel oh, Centre in London? Like, Docklands. Docklands yeah. is. Didn't it? they use oh, that okay. as a an emergency hospital or something? Is that what they used? Yeah, was that they did. Yeah. The Nightingale Hospital was that in the Excel? Yeah, That's it was it. one of the yeah, during COVID. Yeah. 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 So it's there, but only for a year, apparently. I think. Oh, hang on. The Excel's it's not. That's not the old Millennium Dome, is it? No, no, no. no. no it's oh. in Docklands. Right. Okay. Yeah. What is that called? Is that the O2? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is the O2, O2. isn't it? Yeah. 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 I heard they they're going to have it in Birmingham one year, London the next, and kind of alternate between the two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be good. Okay. Yeah, I guess you'd get the bigger names down south, wouldn't you? So, you know. No. Precisely. No, wait a minute. The, no, hang on a minute. That, that's, that's kind of insulting to you two, isn't it? I didn't mean, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, I was trying to insult everyone in the north and I ended up insulting just a couple of people. Ugh. I don't know. Stupid, stupid man. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I did see that. Um, but, yeah, um, comments wise, there's loads. Just have a look. Have a look down the comments this week. There's been lots. Read them for yourself and enjoy them. That's what I would say. Because <laughs> it's the last one. So, you know. I have to say, though, it's fair to say that our audience, I mean, some of the comments are good fun. They're, that We've got a witty and acerbic audience. So thank you very much. Because, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a, a forum almost. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Because I, I kind of like... What we do on here it, when we don't really reply to the comments, but we we mention them on the next podcast, so that's kind of the the back and forth. So yeah, yeah, there's some there's some. I mean, there's some idiots who, who comment. You know, you know who you, you know who there, you was, are. there was there was one particular one. I don't know whether you're going to call it out or or talk about it, but that one where I, I don't even know who asked the question. Was it if we were stuck on a desert island? Oh yes, I'm definitely eat, calling that one out. Who who? who would be the first person you would eat or something like that. And then Ian Mack, I think, responded to it. And I thought oh, yeah. his response was excellent. Would you like me to read, read his response? Would you read like me to read that? Out, well, let's just read that out now because, you know, it's always nice. It was Robin Grant. He said, Robin, um, that's right, yeah. He said, I have a very serious question. If if you were all stranded on together on a remote island with no food, who would you eat first? Discuss, right? But before we go into that, because we all know what everyone's going to say, before we go into that, Ian... Ian said, Jamie, for starters, more finger food. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that bit was funny. This, this <laughs> yeah, next bit. That's good. This next bit, not so much. 
Um, Gary from Mains has said enough to go round. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, Sam for pudding because he's so sweet. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, followed by uh, Daz Cheesy. Um, uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave drier than an oat cake, uh, which then leaves a big bowl of stew at Scouse for breakfast. Scouse, yeah, yeah, and you didn't get mentioned, Adam. But we'll, 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 I, I don't know where, where where would you put where would you put Adam into that? I don't know. Yeah, you're not Scouse, yeah. are you? That's just the accent, isn't no, it? I, no, but half, half me fam, a lot of my family's from there, but. Um... I'm a live die in the world of bus water, so maybe that yeah. that'll be what that is. Yeah. So I, I that I thought that was yeah, thanks Ian. That was that was mm, very funny. That was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we do get a lot of very, very, very engaging and very funny commenters. And you know, since it's since the last episode, we should take the time seriously to say thank you very much for all of your comments over the past season and all of your views. They're very much appreciated. And it's interesting to know, I think, that there's a lot of people who you know, a few people I spoke to at the photography show who who watch every week but don't comment. And I think that's the thing. You get to see the same names commenting a lot, but there's also an awful mm. lot of people who never comment but still watch avidly. So thank you very much to you guys as well. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think I'm going to do any more comments on this. Well, the thing is, Gail, you, you put so much in the group chat today, it was hard to keep up. So well, this is, yeah. this is the Can thing, you... though. We asked for questions, <clears throat> and everyone came back to us with questions on the last episode. Yeah, but you, as the ringmaster, yeah. normally choose kind of yeah. four of those and for us to talk about. And you haven't. You've just dumped everything it's in. It's the last episode and of you, Yeah. It's the last day of school, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is the last day He doesn't care school. now. Yeah, yeah. Do what we want. he's on yeah, holiday mode. I've, I've been busy. <laughs> I've been busy designing the poster for the for the just giving thing at the very last minute. That I should have done earlier. Um, I'll pick. I can happily pick questions. I'll, I'll pick, a, pick question. a question. Okay, I'll pick a question. Uh, okay, first question is is uh, it's not really a question, but Daz, you've been invited to join the nudist site. Is that right? Yeah. Discuss. Have yeah. you really? Yeah. Are you going to? Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> feel free to expand on that. Well, no, no, no. So I, um, on it. it was. It was <laughs> <laughs> so it was quite funny. It's not that actually, hard. I, I uh, <laughs> okay, I got that one. I, I Come came now. home from from work the other day, okay, and I just said too. to uh, to Helen, "Oh, we've generally we've been invited to to go to the the club on." June the eighth, and the look of kind of complete horror on her face, and then I said, "Actually, it's an open day," and they very they, open. It's very <laughs> open, <laughs> which <laughs> which means it's it's fully clothed. So uh, we might even go up there actually, just to, to see because I've left that job half finished. Yeah, but that, you know they're all undressing you with their eyes, yeah, and they they kind of very kindly said. Come back and then we can show you like the you know the clubhouse uh, when it's been finished because yeah we were only contracted to do the first fix get the shell up and they're going to do all the internals so I've been very kindly invited. They're going to do the internals themselves, are they? <laughs> they are going to do the internals, <laughs> but honestly, they are lovely people. Honestly, yeah. they're so nice. So yeah, I might just go back just to have a a coffee with them. Oh dear. So you've left the job half cocked. <laughs> It gets worse, doesn't it? It does. Oh well, that's good. That's good. That's good to know. Um, so you're thinking about it? Is is the bottom line of that? You might go. You what, might join whole... in. No, yeah. I'm not thinking about joining, but I am no. thinking about going back for their open. So, day. are you going to give them a ring? May do. <laughs> May do. And someone called me cheesy. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Or you wouldn't want to be cheesy if you were there, would you? <laughs> oh dear. Um, so let's move on to a topic. And uh, we had loads of questions, as we just mentioned in the comments, and and we will hold them a lot of them over 
to next season because you know we'll, we'll be back next season uh we'll be back in the interim as well but hopefully all of us will be back as a, as a collective again next season to start all over again uh with loads more topics but this one uh we just thought we might discuss because i know Stu's really interested in this one um <laughs> Because in the break, I said, oh, we might discuss this one. He went, oh, deep joy. Um, so this one's from Simon Byrne. Um, and last week we were talking about um, Nigel Danson's video, uh, if you remember, about the one where he was saying about, um, I think, was he talking, did he mention the word burnout? I'm not sure, but he was saying that it was, he was going to scale back on his YouTube videos, didn't he? Um, and he's, uh, Simon's put, um, it'd be interesting if you guys discussed YouTubers getting burnt out some more. I think they're just getting bored of the repetitive nature of creating the same sort of videos each week. It would certainly make me want to slash my wrists. Are any of you guys getting bored? So, I mean, I, I think we should go to Daz first because you have got bored and stopped. Yeah, <laughs> a, li a little bit, but I think I was just enjoying the photography more than making the videos where I think in the early days I really enjoyed making the videos um but you know I don't know it was about a year ago maybe maybe a couple of years ago the pendulum started to to shift and then I just found that the videos were enjoy enjoyable once I'd made them and there's a lot of times I think oh I wish I would have videoed that i wish i would have had that on my channel even if it was just for me to look back on but i kind of just found that it was getting in the way of the enjoyment you know so um yeah so i decided to scale back a couple of years ago and now i've not actually released a video for 12 months it might be 13 months now um and you know i was actually thinking about buying the little dji pocket three just for the hikes that i'm doing um so I, i'm i may upload again soon you know because I'm, I'm back in the lakes so i'm back in the lakes in about three weeks time just for a hike that's all just the hike with the camera not even a, a photography hike it's just i'll have the camera with me um and then i'm back there in may for a fortnight again hiking so i, I may start it up again just to document the hikes but not really for the for the, for the uh, photography okay Okay. Well, I mean, Adam and Stu, you're kind of, you know, you're professionals. And do you, I'd say probably, I don't know, I'm, I could be wrong here, but I'd say Adam probably more than Stu, you rely on your YouTube presence. Um, hmm. do, do you find it, are you finding you getting bored with it? Are you, you know, do you struggle to get videos out, you know, on a regular basis? Um, yeah, I struggle to get videos out, but I don't let it bother me too much. Uh, I think I think the problem that a lot of YouTubers are having right now is is the pressure or this this pressure they put on themselves to have a video out every every week because uh, you know the, the algorithms they favor those who put videos out on a regular basis and um, you know I talk to I mean I, I I know a lot of other YouTubers that I've talked to and they're they're all feeling the same thing um, I think. Uh, I, th I think the problem with YouTube is, you know, where's the out? Like, where where do you? Because I was talking to Nigel about it, and I and I said, well, well, where do you see yourself from ten years from now? Like, are you still going to be putting out videos, or like, where's your? And how are you going to end this? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think uh, I think for a lot of them, it's just kind of slowly fade out, um, put out one quality video out maybe perhaps every once every two weeks or once a month rather than weekly videos. Uh, I know, I know Tom, I don't know whether he'll do it or not. I know he was talking about eventually scaling back and then putting out one really good quality video out every now and then a longer format one. And he's done a couple of those. So maybe that's his way of getting out. Um, Cause it is, you know, you can only talk about photography so much. Uh, I know I, I struggle. So what I end up doing was just, I just do it as if I'm talking to one of my buddies about photography and just leave it that way. And if people like it, great. If they don't, well, it's not a big deal, you know, because I'm yeah. like Daz. I, I really enjoy the photography part of it. The, the, the filming, uh, I enjoy it sometimes, but sometimes it gets in the way. I'd rather just be out taking photographs. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, this, this is what I was, I was literally, as you were just saying that about, 
doing less but doing bigger projects i wonder whether that's the way that because there's got to be a shelf life there's got to be a shelf life on on for, for for professional landscape photographer youtubers if you like there's got to be a shelf life on there's going to be like a tipping point where suddenly you're not you, you know it's no longer viable for you to do it it's no longer yeah well i i think know. maybe i talk maybe i was talking to some of you guys about it i mean this year i'll be 60 and uh i think to myself well am i still going to be doing this when i'm 70 yeah am i going to be walking around with my walker you know taking people on my i mean you know at some point you've got to mm-hmm. kind of scale back yeah. um i just I wonder what... though if i just wonder if the natural progression is to move to more documentary style videos so like you know when nigel did that sort of three weeks on on the isle of wherever it was in scotland yeah, Luskintyre, yeah, Luskintyre. Yeah. yeah i wonder whether that's the natural progression is to move away from doing weekly videos mm. and do bigger productions that have more value and maybe try and get some value out of that somehow i just, think so you know, I mean, I think yeah. the reason why Tom is so successful is because his aren't really so much about photography; they're more about uh, adventures and 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 Tom loves doing videos, so mm-hmm. and it shows, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like a lot of photographers, I, I it's funny because I I watch other photographers and they're all kind of doing we're all doing the same thing, you know. We're showing people our composition, and but do people really care? I I, I don't know. Um, I do think in the early days, um, perhaps people did. Um, I think because like YouTube was, or landscape photography on YouTube was so fresh. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people kind of came to it um, and was really interested in, you know, people's settings, if they didn't know honestly too much about photography, the settings, their composition. And I think a lot of people got a lot out of them style of videos in the early days. But then obviously, like anything, you know, YouTube then got saturated with uh, photographers on YouTube. And then they was all saying the same things. Because as you say, you know, there's only so much you can talk about when it comes to landscape photography, really, especially not with settings and composition. I think once you've heard it for a year or a couple of years, then that's when it starts to wane uh, a little bit. It's a very small oh, niche too. Landscape photography is a really mm. small niche in on YouTube, especially mm. like even Tom's channel. I mean, okay. So he has, I don't know, four or 500,000, but that's pretty small compared mm. to some other channels out there, you know, yeah. and photography, I think uh, wildlife photography is probably more popular or, um, you know, just general photography, kind of like what James does. James pops is, I think, that's more relatable to a lot of people rather than just landscape photography. Uh, well, all of my bigger videos have always been through the wildlife photography. Yeah. Not yeah. the landscape. And and also people like Simon, Simon Dechamont, uh, you know, he's he's really great because he a lot of people go on YouTube, they just want to learn a skill. He's straight in there, no fancy music, no B roll, just yeah. straight in, tells you what to do. And but I, I couldn't do those. I'd, I'd be bored stiff. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've always said that I think people like to watch the person and the personality as much as they want to they like to watch what the person's actually telling them. You know, th- there's people out there that are very engaging in front of the camera, got a great personality, full of life and enthusiastic. And people people like that. You know, they want to they want to enjoy what they watch. And if they engage with somebody, if they think, yeah, if I was down the pub with that guy, I could have a chat and, you know, we could get to get to know each other. I think I'd like him or her. Um, so I think it's it's more probably about how how much that you enjoy yourself in front of the camera and therefore how much your audience can do it more than the actual content. And I think a lot of people that watch regular YouTubers watch them because they like the person. Yeah. You know? and, I, and I think that's, that's why they're continuing to put stuff out and, and do well because the actual topic itself, as we've said, it's you, there's only so much you can do of the standard, here's my shot, here's my composition. It's got to be about, okay, it's me out on a different day and look, I'm, I'm doing something different. But if you're telling a story about yourself or your experience, then that's what they're interested in, I think. It was actually, it was quite funny because while I was at the show, I was talking to Gary Goff about uh, 
the demographics of our channels. And he was gloating because he had 9% of his channel were women and mine was only like 3% or something. And they said, well, what about the age group? And uh, we looked at the age group and the majority of my people that watch my videos are 65 or over. So I'm thinking, well, no wonder my numbers are going down. All my viewers are dying. <laughs> Just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, I mean, I, I think there's there's room for younger people, uh, you know, who get into landscape photography or nature photography. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully there'll be more people coming up, you know, younger people. Make it a bit more exciting, you know. Mm. Uh, the channels that I like watching and I will watch them. I will watch the same video over and over again. Well, not over and over again, but if you, if you think of um, Glenn black, black Craig or mm. other people that do hiking videos, they might release a video on the Wainwrights for argument's sake. And it, it, it you know, uh, and it, it, I don't know, it might be say hell Vela, not, And I'll, I'll just watch it for the sake, cause it's come on. I think, Oh, that's really good. And then in a year's time, I think, oh, I might want to do that, Fell. Mm. And then I think, oh, where was that video that I watched on Helvellyn? So I think if it's an informative video, especially with a series, mm. it probably gets a lot more views because people will watch it when it first comes out and then they will search for it again when they actually want to do that particular hike. Mm -hmm. what, what, what about you, Stu? Because... I know, I know you were quite reticent initially about YouTube, weren't you? And are you, mm. are you feeling, are you feeling the, the, the sort of drain of it now or do you Me? still enjoy oh, it? No. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I mean, I put videos out when I can do them and when it's practical. So I, I don't get like the burnout or any of that. Um, and I'm not I'm sort of dependent on it in any way. So it's, I don't have that pressure, but it, it's it's a tricky one, isn't it? I mean, the only thing I the only thing that um, when I think about this stuff and we you know people talk about algorithms, I do think sometimes though creators do have to or certain creators do have to kind of take a, a level of responsibility with that because you know you you can't have an algorithm without people putting stuff in and a lot of that sort of der derivative I was going to say der derogatory derivative. Um, that derivative content, it's been churned out for a long time and people have been happy to keep churning that out for a long time. And I, d I don't know, I, I, think it, it's, I think it's a bit of an easy cop-out sometimes just to blame an algorithm. I think it's a, it's a two-way street. It's, if that stuff's going in, inevitably, if more people are going to be doing that, that's what's going to be served up to people. Um, but... I can see the side of it where people are tied into that. And, you know, if your business is attached to, to YouTube and there's a there's a demand to keep doing that, then it must be very hard to kind of pull yourself back from that. Um, but it's, it's, it's a funny one because, like, I'm quite fortunate with that shop in that I do get to speak to a lot of people in person uh, that watch videos. And the override, I, I think I said this on a video about six months ago, that the overriding feedback you get from people is that they do prefer what, like Adam's saying there, about making videos where you are just literally just going through the process of, here's the photography, this is what I'm doing. Um, so you, you, you kind of take that in and you think, well, why is that not being pushed more? And it makes you think, well, is the audience that are watching these videos actually serious landscape photographers at all because it, it totally rails against the kind of anecdotal evidence I get a lot which is oh I'm sick of these sort of clickbait videos all I want to watch is just someone doing photography but yet when you're producing those type of videos they tend to do obviously less well than the, than the clickbait yeah. ones so it's it's hard <clears> to know what the sort of I mean it gives you we all know about the analytics and demographics and all that kind of thing but it does make me wonder just what kind of the proportion of the audience are actual, actually photographers at all. I do think there's a, a much bigger proportion of those people than we probably even think about that have no interest in landscape photography specifically. I think they just like seeing people out and about in the countryside or whatever, and, and, and they enjoy that element of it. But from, 
hardcore landscape photographers that I speak to on a daily basis, they really hate that kind of clickbaity stuff, but that's the stuff that's driven. So it's it's hard to kind of get your head around sometimes. But I'm certainly yeah. not burnt out by it because I don't, I don't mm. do enough of it. So, yeah. Mm. Sam? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I guess the point I was, I was going to make sort of ties in quite nicely with what Stu was saying. And, and, you know, this isn't based on hard data as such, but where I see it, I suspect that there's two audience, two audience groups that, that watch the landscape photography videos on YouTube. The first is people who are, using YouTube as, as a search engine and want to learn quickly. They might be novices, they might be very new to it. Um, and I think that the vast majority of people watching landscape photography on YouTube fall into that bracket. And they might not be repeat watchers. They might just be looking for a quick tips video on how do I take a photograph of a waterfall. And I think that the numbers of those people doing those searches who won't necessarily subscribe to a channel, but they'll watch the videos, probably far outweigh the number of people who are more experienced landscape photographers who are genuinely interested in following someone and watching repeat videos. Um, and as such, I think the YouTube algorithm is likely to, to favor those, the, the first group because, you know, they're trying to drive the most views to sell the most, most, um, most adverts. And I think that that's, you know, that's just the way we should expect it to, to work to some extent. The second group of repeat watchers who will watch someone no matter how often they post, if they post a good quality video every every three months, four months or whatever, they'll go back to that person because they're invested in them and they're invested in the stories. And when you have great content creators who produce those interesting videos, those people will go back and watch those content from that channel again and again. Um, so I guess for for people who I guess want to sort of maybe have built up a following, but are having burnout, um, you know, I'd like to take some reassurance that they will have a core set of subscribers who genuinely aren't that bothered about how often they release their videos and they'll go back and watch them. I mean, that's how I follow the channels, but I, I enjoy the most. I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me how often they post, I'll go back and watch their videos again and again. So it might not be, overall high numbers of views that they get but they'll have a core audience who are invested in their channel and will want to go back and watch them so i guess you know my my thoughts are there must be another model to capitalize on those repeat watches and it might be that youtube isn't necessarily the best space for doing that and it might be that another platform that maybe there's space for another platform maybe there is another platform that would offer that that capability for people to hold on to those repeat watches without becoming so fussed about pushing the pushing the algorithms all the time. Um, and of course, if you're trying to build a channel, you know you want to you want you know, you you require the algorithm to do that to get that initial growth. But once you have a certain level going, and again, you know this is all based on hearsay. Really, I don't have a ba data to to back it up. But I would have thought that those those channels would have a core audience who would be interested in in paying for or interested in in watching that content and potentially interested in paying for it as well, as well be that through Patreon or through a subscriber platform. Um, so I think that maybe that's the way things are going to go for some of these channels in the future. Perhaps is 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 more of that kind of model, or maybe there'll be a different platform where people can can use a subscription model mm. for for their own videos. Dave, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think, I mean, if we're examining burnout, that's quite a personal thing, isn't it? I mean, if you're banging your head against a brick wall, you're putting out good quality stuff and nobody seems to be tuning in and you can't get any traction in the algorithm, then I can understand how that would be extremely frustrating. But only if your motivation for doing it is so that you get loads of views. That's not <laughs> dancing. <Really>? Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, so <laughs> I, I, I think that from a personal <laughs> standpoint, if you're experiencing burnout, it's because, and, and kind of by definition of the expression is you're putting lots of energy into it and you're running out of energy. You, you're, kind of at the end of your tether with it. 
So whether or not you're doing the Simon Dontremont sort of straight in, this is how you work ISO or this is how you work aperture, because he's very specific with his videos. Or if you're doing something like Tom, who gets very cinematic, I mean, that behind the scenes piece where you, Adam and Paul were in the van and Tom filmed himself leaving the car park and took at least half an hour to travel, what, 20 meters? <laughs> because he had to keep stopping, get out, change all three <clears throat> camera angles, f shoot another 10 seconds, get out, change them all again. You know, so, so you have those cinematic epics you have the standard composition sandwiches where it's like, here's my picture, right? That's that right now onto the next picture. Um, and those I think are probably more common. Um, but for me, I, I, I just tend to be out with a camera and I switch a video camera on and just kind of record what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at. And so, yes, some of it is is an image or two, but a lot of it is like my last video was a lot of musings and a lot of moaning about being cold. Um, and I, 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 another really good example is, Stu, your recent video from Lafoten where you're dicking about under a rack of dead fish. <laughs> you you weren't setting up shots. You, no. you You didn't set up two cameras to film yourself walking into it. You just wandered in there, but the story was really compelling because it was interesting and different. But all you were doing was showing what you're up to and what yeah. what you, you, the chap that was with you was up to. Um, and I, I find those the most engaging. But the fact remains that if you put a thumbnail up with a dead fish and an arrow saying, avoid this, I wish I knew to avoid this. Yeah. You know, it, and so that's possibly why you're less close to burnout than some others because you approach it from the standpoint of look here I am I'm doing some stuff so I'm going to switch my video camera on and record me doing some stuff or I want to make a point about bozos with boulders trying to break ice <laughs> and, and I think I, I'm nowhere near burnout and there are times when I put out videos on a much more frequent time scale but it tends to be and call a spade a spade it tends to be in the summer because I hate going out in piss poor weather. I mean, I don't care how, how or you you know, the summer, that's no time to do photography. It's brilliant on a beach at 10 o'clock at night in a T-shirt. Happy days. So I'll film myself. <laughs> I, I, I'm not interested in horizontal rain and mist and bloody, you know, ice axe up a snowy ridge. Yeah, I'll get some great pictures, but I'll have a miserable time getting there. So I, I think that, if, and so, yeah, from a personal standpoint, burnout kind of depends on what it is you're trying to achieve, what your targets are, what your goals are. If you haven't really got any goals and targets, you're not going to get burnt out because you're just doing it because it's fun. And the minute it stops being fun, it doesn't matter if you stop doing it or you do it less. Um, you know, if if your mortgage payments depend on your YouTube ad revenue, completely different set of standards and you know, we all know perfectly well that Nigel Danson's mortgage payments don't depend on that because yeah, he started landscape photography after doing well for himself and it was just something else to do after selling up. So, you know, I think there's a bit of, uh, perhaps he's been slightly more dramatic than he needs to be in that circumstance. And you can tell That's him my that thoughts. next time you speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> he can say, I Dave that. said. Yeah. I have no, a... I, yeah. Man up. I, I have <laughs> a vid video coming out. Actually, you guys will like my thumbnail. I have a video coming out this Sunday, and I'm pointing down on... At a fish. I Ian's on one side, and Henry's on the other side. And I said, uh, I said, um, do you need these two knobs to make you a better photographer. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> That's great. Brilliant. Yeah. And we still gave you free accommodation. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't know I'm doing it. But... <laughs> <laughs> they will now. Yeah. Um, no, nah, no. Nah, I asked them. I asked them. They Because yeah. we, we, I mean, obviously, <laughs> when, when we were away, we chatted. That's all we chatted about was, bloody YouTube and how frustrating it can be. And 
I mean, the, the clickbait titles, I mean, there's a reason why they do that. I mean, they, they, they would be the first to admit that all the clickbait titles uh, was just to get more views. And Ian, he's been a photographer for a long time, uh, but his gig was mostly weddings and, and stuff like that. And he wants to get out of that and obviously get into more nature photography. So by putting those clickbait titles, uh, his YouTube channel has grown leaps and bounds and, you know, good for him, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, we can bitch and moan all we want, can't we? And I have, believe me about it, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that these are all tools to grow your channel and they're all tools to get more people to get their eyes on your photography. Um, so, you know, the, the older I get, I'm still very cynical about these things, but the more I'm coming around to the fact that, yeah, you know, it's part and parcel of being on YouTube. You know, if you want to, if you want to grow, you know, if, if you if you're happy doing what you're doing, I'm I'm happy doing what I'm doing. But if you want to grow and you want to become bigger and you want to get more eyes on your, on your photography, then that is one of the methods to do it is to put out clickbait titles and to you know to work the algorithm in your favour. You know, and if you want to, I was talking to a couple of guys. Alternatively, you could have a bit of self-respect and not do it. Mm, yeah. Well, yes, no, you could. But what I'm saying is, is that yeah. is that you're not going to grow as quick. And if growing is your primary goal, if your primary goal is to get as many people to view your YouTube channel as possible, to get as many views to to generate income, then that is a given that that's going to get it, get you there faster in 99% of the cases than not. So, well, I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with you because, you know, let's be fair. James Popsis name has come up this evening and he doesn't do that sort of thing. He's not clickbaity. Uh, I would say he is. Really? Yeah. Okay, I, is, I don't yeah. know what clickbait is then. I thought it was like red arrows and I wish I knew this and seven tips. I don't think he's in that league, is he? No, I don't think so. No, no. he's not in that league, but he still he still subtly clickbaits. And maybe he's just better at it than, than the more uh, obvious well, ones. But... I, 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 I think... I'm, I'm obviously in the wrong forum because I've got no clue what I'm talking about. I, I think the reason why people watch James is because he's a really likeable character. Exactly. Um, and as a, that's exactly how he is in real life. And yeah. um, he's a really great <clears throat> photographer. I really enjoy his photography. And yep, um, totally. his, his videos are, are short, sweet, and to the point, and he has a bit One of One day, though. if he pronounces Truven correctly, I'll be really, <laughs> really happy. <laughs> if you're going to do clickbait, I mean, at least have a bit of fun with it, you know. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. now and then I'll put a clickbait, but I just think it's kind of fun, you know. I mean, why not? I might do one now, once I've found out what it is exactly. <laughs> Well, maybe I'm we wrong. Could... Maybe maybe James is the one percent that that doesn't use clickbait and has still become successful. I don't know. I just I just you know I just look at it. I look at it really now as it's kind of a. I don't do it, but it's a tool, isn't it? It's just a tool Gary, to move mm. move on. Gary, I, I'm more like you. So you're not on your own. I, I yeah. I'll be honest. I find all of it absolutely cringe, mm. and. It's, no, I do. I call the spade a spade. Yeah. Uh, I do. I find it absolutely cringe. And if you're happy to go down that road, then more power to you. But uh, it's it's not going to be for everyone. I think the thing that needs to be remembered with it is that, you know, it's an active choice that someone's entering into. If you you, you know, it, it's hard to kind of have any kind of sympathy for for anyone mourning about that when they're they're choosing to do that it's it's fine to do it but you, you sort of can't have your cake and eat it with it i would say um no but I, yeah. I i do i do think you know and i've come much more round to this now like i said than i ever was before i do think if you're generating money and, and that's your primary goal from from you know and most of us here you know or, or a number of us here it's not our it's not our full-time job. It's not our primary goal. And so it's really easy to sit and sort of say, you know, and I've done it a lot, you know, a lot, or oh, clickbait does my nut in and this does my nut in and that annoys me. But then I guess if, if you, if you, if there's a tactic out there to get you to where you want to be and it's, you know, then you'd be a fool not to at least consider it, you know, but I don't want to get there. And that's my point. That's my issue. I don't, I don't, that's my thing. I don't want to get to, you know, x million subscribers and views and all of that so 
for me for me to do it is you know i don't i don't want the flack that will come my way from doing it because there's no end goal yeah but ha- hang on a minute though it's it's fair to say that most of the people that in invo- in in get involved in in obvious clickbait don't really do that well off the back of it all all they get is the derision of people like us because there's loads of people doing very very clickbaity things that have got absolutely bugger all subscribers i mean because they're rubbish the minute someone clicks onto it they quickly realize it what they should have instead of a thing on your video saying how many views you've had they should say well what's your watch time because i'm willing to bet there's falls off a cliff after the first 10 seconds well they they do you can you can look up your retention um yeah no i know but you you can't can you see other people's retention uh yeah you can use programs to see um i can't remember the name of it now um all right (laughs) I think it's video. <laughs> now we're all sat up, take notes. <laughs> I think vid, vid IQ, I think you can. Mm. I could be wrong. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think I don't have a problem with clickbait as long as you have the content to back it up. Like just putting a clickbait thumbnail on that and then not having anything, no substance to a video, well, people are just going to turn off straight away. So you need something, some substance. But this is it. You're absolutely right. The sort of, I wish I knew this when I started and you watch for 10 minutes and in the last 30 <laughs> seconds say, so my tip is to take the lens cap off before you fire the shutter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because that's the sort of standard we're working with in some instances. Yeah. To be fair, I still struggle. I mean, of we uh, could, we... Casey Neistat, he, he has clickbait all the time, but his, his videos are pretty engaging. So I think that's not? the thing, though, isn't it? We've got to draw a line between out-and-out clickbait titles and a catchy title. And there is, there is a fine line, you know. I mean, I think if you've got if, – if there's a lot of fat in the video – um, about a particular subject, then you can be creative with the title because you know that you know there is there is a lot of meat on the bones in that video. And I've mentioned this before. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of boxing uh, videos, and there's a big, big um, channel out there which is like the equivalent of Tom's on landscape photography. And I have unsubscribed to them just because their clickbait titles were just getting more and more outrageous. There'll be a clickbait title with Eddie Hearn, who's a boxing promoter, if nobody knows. Eddie Hearn said X, and it'll be a 10-minute video. And then the last three seconds, seconds of, it, of yeah. the, the last three seconds of the video will be what Eddie Hearn actually said. And it'll be like, oh, thanks for joining us, Eddie. And then the video will end. And I just think, I've just sat through 10 minutes of that. <laughs> for that, And I thought, I'm not playing that game anymore. And I unsubscribe to their, to their channel. So there is a fine line between kind of promoting your channel. As long as it's got some, some meat on the bones, I ain't got a problem. But if it is an out-and-out clickbait, then no, I can't be doing with it. We've kind of morphed away from Simon's original question. Sorry about that, Simon. <laughs> it was a good question, to be fair. Oh, no, yeah. back to you too. Yeah. Well, all I, think... all I was, all, all I was oh, going to cool. say, Gary, was that we, we can always be like our friend and, and uh, uh, fellow YouTuber James Byrne and actually make a clickbait title out of clickbait titles because his recent one he's released today, I don't know whether you've seen it, I saw is that. Uh, I saw that. Landscape Photography, <laughs> Shoot Like an Amateur. <laughs> Obviously, having a little bit of play on those that are saying, you know, you must shoot like a pro, and his his content is very much around. Well, I'm an amateur, so I obviously don't know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, yeah, you can well, always I, be I, like James. <laughs> I did one recently. I, I put uh, on my photography is crap, and people were complaining about that. So the, the next one I put, my photography is awesome. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I was just having a bit of fun with it, you know. Oh, I yeah. must subscribe to your channel. It sounds quite good. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Same old shape. Yeah, so I think we've I think we've done that one to death. Um, yes. So... Uh, Actually, you can... no, before we wrap up on that one, I would like to go on record as saying that I think Simon's channel is absolutely brilliant because he... Is a cinematographer, and he combines it with really good quality photography, and it's it's uh, an an outrage that he has so few subscribers, because this is somebody who genuinely really knows what he's doing, and can make engaging and interesting videos every single time. 
So check Simon Burns' channel out, folks, because yep. if you haven't, you're missing out. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with that as well. Yeah, maybe not enough clickbait titles, Dave. Exactly, more arrows. Yeah, more arrows, Simon. More arrows. <laughs> I wish yeah. I knew what pros do. Yeah. Press actually, this button. Actually, do you know what? There's one channel that I've stopped watching, which is a golf channel, right? And I used to really enjoy it. But literally every other video now is the end. It's the end. This is the end. The end. Every other video. And like the end of what? Or the end of my the end of my swing. Oh or the end is of that the guy is that the guy called yeah. the average golfer? No. No, it's a different one. Oh, he one. does it's, that. Uh, uh, yeah. right, okay. Every every video is the end. Like literally. Yeah. Stop. Anyway. Yeah. Um yeah, I think we'll I think we'll move on from that one because um, you know we're already do you know we've we've done one topic really, we're an hour and twenty one minutes in. What the hell? Um, what has happened here? Uh, you, did you want to put one? You put one in, didn't you, Stu? You and and Sam said what a good idea when you were talking about idiots. Oh, Sam! It was Sam's Sam's what? idea, I think. Yeah, good good yeah, topic. Like, yeah, yeah, just I in general, just, idiots yeah. in general. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll pass it on to because I, I, oh. oh, 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 I suggested doing it as a topic. So it was it was in Stu's latest video where he was talking about, um, uh, or he was showing the rocks which had been thrown onto the ice by a photographer um, mm. to smash the ice yeah. purposefully to make it more photogenic, and it had just left this this complete sort of mess, which then meant obviously Stu. Well, Stu would be able to tell you about it, but but he then meant that Stu couldn't then take 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 photos. It had ruined the, the place for him. So I was wondering whether any of us have any examples of whether we've seen photographers in person doing stupid things like that, or do we have any anecdotes about it? I mean, I, I must admit, I've not seen much of it. I saw a little bit in Iceland of people jumping over barriers um, so at the top of Skogafoss. People were just sort of completely ignoring all the signs and jumping over the barriers and going trampling over the the, the bits of ground which were obviously being damaged um and i've seen people also along that beach just completely taking risks which are unnecessary um but i was wondering if you guys had had any examples that you you wanted to share of photographers being idiots well if i did i'd be calling out a lot of my friends so <laughs> yeah, this one <laughs> Well, I, I've got an anecdote, which I, I, I haven't shared, actually, I don't think, before. Um, I was at Llanthwyn Island, which, of course, is the sort of location where you get a lot of photographers. And if you have 100 photographers there, 10 of them at least will be total arseholes. Um, so me and a, a tuition client were setting up a shot with about half an hour to go before uh, sunset. And you'll know the shot, Gary. It's it's where we're sat under the big concrete cross, not okay, in the yeah. usual place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got this guy all set up, and we're going to emulate the shot that I took there when when we did a, a group meetup. Uh, and this woman comes bowling up and says, "How long are you going to be?" And we said, "Hang on a minute." I looked at my watch and said, "Yeah, sunset's in about half an hour, so we'll be done in forty-five. We're going to take." four or five shots across a period. But I, I, I want to go there. I want to shoot there. And I said, well, tough. And and she said, but don't you know how far I've come? And I thought, <laughs> no, you haven't told me. She said, I've flown in from Italy for this. And I said, well, that's bad luck, isn't it? Because <laughs> I had a head start. Um, but she couldn't have been ruder. If if she'd opened up with, would you mind? Because obviously we're putting a camera on a tripod and setting up a composition and we're waiting for the light to change. And if she'd asked nicely, we'd have, oh, yeah, of course, take your shot. We can set up, you know, yeah. five, ten minutes, not a problem. But she couldn't have been ruder. And I couldn't have enjoyed more responding to that rudeness. <laughs> and the guy I was with, he was, he was trying to, like, disappear into a hole somewhere. He, he was He was quite shy. Uh, and, and he said, "Oh, I said, no, oh, don't worry about it, mate. You know, you 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 get your shot. But I think that um, if you frequent somewhere where there's lots of photographers likely to be there on a regular basis, you're probably going to encounter this sort of thing far more frequently." 
Actually, that, that's just reminded me of a, um, sorry to jump back in again, but it's reminded me of a story of uh, my friend Ewan, uh, Ewan Dunsmuir when he was, so he was, he's based in New Zealand. And I remember he shared this in one of the Facebook groups, but he had an instance where he was, um, so Ewan shoots medium format, um, but his camera was out being fixed. So he was out at a beach one day shooting with his, he was actually just taking a picture of his M50, which he, he, he used for making his YouTube videos. And um, some other photographers came up and told him to to move because they they were proper photographers and they wanted to take the photo, and basically got into a big argument with him about it. But it was just that kind of complete sort of judging him based on the camera he was using. Obviously, they didn't know that he's a <laughs> National Geographic photographer who shoots medium format normally. <laughs> it's like, um, but yeah, it's just people being idiots. Anyone else have have a have a story? I, I haven't got anything because I'm you're the idiot. Any, exactly. I don't usually want to be in the dick. So I had um, an incident. This was quite a few years ago now. I was in uh, Jasper National Park, and I set up. It's quite a popular area. It's called uh, there's a there's a waterfall. I can't remember the name of it. And uh, so I, at that time, I was using four by five camera. And I set up over the side because it's a popular area. A lot of buses stop there. So I thought, well, I'll get out of everybody's way and I'll stand over to the side. So I set up there and was all ready to take my shot. And this bunch of people get off this bus. And this guy, he stands right next to me with his camera. And then he puts his camera in front of my, my camera, right where my lens is, and <laughs> takes the shot. <laughs> and I just kind of looked at him and went, I just... And he just smiled at me, and then he walked off. I just thought, what a bizarre thing to do. <laughs> what a great idea. I mean, like, that's, that's what we should all do, is just follow a professional around and just move our camera in front, and that's it, just slip out the back door. Yeah, yeah it was just such a weird thing to do, you know. Anyway, Or you could just wait. Let let Adam take the shot and then slip his memory card out when he's not looking. Yeah. And then put your look one o- in. Look over there. Look. Yeah. Look over there. <laughs> what are you talking about, mate? <laughs> yeah. Is that actually what those tilt shift yeah. lenses is for? So you can set your camera up next to someone else's and just kind of move it, move it across. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just keep edging it and edging it. Yeah. Did, didn't you have a, a an incident, Stuart? Well, it wasn't a photographer, though, was it? On, on the dog walk on one of the islands. Yeah, yeah, and Harry's yeah. a couple of years ago. I had an idiot dog walker that, to be honest, I sh- should have fucking chinned him, to be honest. But, <laughs> the... <laughs> oh, no, seriously, I should have. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, mo- most of the issues I've, I mean, that's probably the worst incident I've had. But um, I- I've not really seen that many with photographers specifically it's usually members of the public they're just you know a bit rude or whatever and you know most of the time it's fine that dog walker thing was a different level entirely the the only photographer one i can think of uh, years ago when i was um i was up in a synth um with another photographer and photographing the uh i think it's called the elf in bothy um sam you'll know it won't you yeah i know um, yeah Looking to yeah, it's looking towards Colmore and Sullivan, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And me, me and this, me, me and my mate had finished shooting, but there was two or three other photographers sort of stood shooting this scene, and um, there's not that many places to stand to take that shot. It's kind of like a sort of bit of a cliche sort of uh, shot with with one angle, and we'd we'd finished up, but there was two or three still there, and another workshop leader in a minibus turned up and um, he's, he's, he's well known for having a very poor reputation, shall we say. Um, he turned up and the people piled out of his minibus and he basically just walked straight in front of these other two photographers that were still there. And they'd been there for quite a while because, I mean, we'd been there for an hour at that point anyway and they were still there. And he just piled piled in front of them, got set up, and the other photographers are sort of looking like, you know, what, what are you doing? Um, and they sort of tried to politely sort of say, look, can you, you know, we've been studying, can you can you move? And it was like, no, I'm on a schedule, I need to do this, you know, I've got 
And he was trying to give it the whole sort of, I'm running a workshop, so, you know, I have priority or something, which we know, of course, is, is nonsense. You know, you, you're, you're there first or you're not. Um, and as we were sort of walking away to the car, you could hear this all kicking off between about five of them, and they were all sort of shouting the odds at each other and stuff. Mm. And I, just, I thought, Jesus. But, yeah, knowing who that photographer is, that didn't surprise me at all, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head with photographers. Yeah. Would, would it be someone we've heard of? It would. Yeah. Oh, go on. Don't don't put this out, Gary. <laughs> yeah, I won't put it in. I actually have a story, but I can't. I Are you can't... suggesting there's a whole segment there that isn't getting into the final edit? <laughs> Is that what you're be. saying? I think there might be. Uh, I can't put any names in or any locations because it will compromise um, who who said it to me and and when and about whom. But I was talking to someone recently, and they were saying that they were somewhere, uh, and they bumped into someone. And they said to that someone that they're going to go to somewhere, right? And he said, oh, no, you don't want to go there. You want to go to this waterfall. Much better, much, much better, because they didn't know the location this guy did, apparently. So they went off to this waterfall, shot the waterfall, and then it was they were getting really close to sunset. And as they got to this place where they, where they were going to go originally, but this person had told them not to go, he was there with his workshop. So he sent them off to the waterfall so he could have his workshop group there so they could get in all the right positions for the sunset before they got there which i thought was really interesting and who was that gal and who was that that was all right well on that i think we'll uh i think we'll wrap it up um thank you very much for watching thanks for watching the last 16 episodes of this season uh like i said we'll be back with a few more hopefully over the summer um thank you guys you, for, you've got to do on. that again mate you you're so like downbeat yeah. we, we were just finishing on a jolly topic and you've, <laughs> you've okay, gone okay, all okay. funereal it's not in back in the summer is it it's not back in the summer because we'll be right. coming back leading up to okay. july right. okay <laughs> thanks so much <laughs> 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 Jesus! If somebody's on your desk tickling your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting myself back in there. Oh, Thanks so much for. All right. I think we'll call it a day at that. Thank you very much for for watching over the last 16 episodes. We'll be back leading up to the summer, Daz. Um, not over the summer. Um, and obviously, you know, thank you very much, and thank you to you guys for for taking the time to to come on here every week, and uh, you know, it's really appreciated. Um, next season, they've all agreed they're going to do uh, editing duties alongside me, so that's going to be brilliant. Um, no, no, definitely silence. No, um, no, but thank you anyway. Um, you know, we've 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 really enjoyed your <laughs> your your viewership, and we've enjoyed your comments, and we hope that you've uh, you've managed to get through the dark winter nights uh, with a little bit of help from us. And uh, yeah, we'll be back again be, way before we do that walk, um, and hopefully we'll we'll do one or two before then. Uh, but please, if you can, you know, give generously and uh, they're all for good causes. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you. Uh, well, we'll see you soon. Goodbye. See you. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Sam. You're milking it there, yeah. Sam. Yeah. 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 <laughs>